Uh, my name is Alex Vanderleck, and I am playing Leopold Bloom in The Producers. I can do it. I can do it. That's not me. I'm a loser. I'm a coward. I'm a chicken. Oh, don't you see? When it comes to wooing women, My name is Joanna. I am playing. You ready for this? Ula Inga Hansen Benson Janssen Talon Holland Spaden Sponson. Bianca Stark and Blue? Good job, Oh, what? Oh, excuse me. I mean, Svenska. Swedish. Casting today? My name is James Weir, and I'm playing the role of Franz Liebkind. Franz Liebkind? I was never a member of the Nazi party! I was only following orders! I had nothing to do with the war! I didn't even know the war was on! We lived in the back, near Switzerland. All we ever heard was yodeling. Yodeling, hey who? Yodeling, hey who? Yodeling, hey who? Who are you? <laughs> I do community theater in my spare time because it has always just resonated with me as a person. I've always enjoyed acting on stage and being able to have the opportunity to play all of these different roles. And musical theater in general has always just touched me, just the way that actors portray these roles and the way that the music resonates. I mean, it's just such a powerful art form that has always resonated with me since I was a young kid. So I've just always done it. Uh, I've been involved in theater since before before middle school even started, and I've been singing in like church choirs and everything even before that. Um, and I just absolutely love performing. Even as an elementary school kid, I would, you know, want to take the harder part in the songs or take the solo while everybody else was singing, you know, just the ensemble parts. And um, I've, yeah, always loved performing, so it's just kind of continued to this day. I've been doing it since I was really young. My mom was involved in theater, and then when I was you know, five, six, since as long as I can remember, I would come with her to rehearsals and hang out and help paint things and was just involved in it and then just started auditioning and doing it too. These people are my family. You know, we, we work together, we sweat together, we're making art together, and you know, you get this huge group of people and everyone's doing their part, and you're just there to support each other. Like some of these people I've known for over 20 years. So, yeah, second family. Uh, I think that community theater is extremely important because it's people going outside of their normal routine to make something great for their community. It's, it's people who come from all walks of life and all sorts of different jobs coming together to create an amazing piece of art just out of their own free time, of their own free will, like donating their time, their efforts, even their money to you know, an organization and, and creating this excellent experience for uh, you know, anybody to come and go to. You know, we're in Cecil County, Maryland, which sometimes doesn't get the best reputation or gets you know, jokes made for it, but it's such a hotbed of arts, you know, and Milburn Stone is a really big part of that. And, and the extremely high quality shows that this theater puts on on a very regular basis is you know, one of the reasons that I love coming back to Milburn over and over again. <laughs> It has been an incredible experience to work on this production. Just the comedic value of this show, and before I didn't know much about this show going into auditions, uh, I was really just hoping to just enjoy my time doing another show with Milburn Stone. Um, and the show itself has just provided me with a knowledge of comedy and a knowledge of how actors play off each other, and just taking a, a topic that is somewhat sensitive and turning it into this beautiful comedic masterpiece has, has been a huge part of this experience with me.
I think community theater, and especially this theater in particular, is so special because of the genuine, actual community that is involved in community theater. You create this family that just has to bond together in, in two weeks, and you usually always do, and you have this family that just gathers together around a show and builds a true community around a show, and you all have the same goal in mind and the same purpose in mind. And so it's just this cohesive group and this cohesive community working and putting on this art form and just achieving this great thing at the end. And you all have the same goal and the same purpose and it just makes everything just a, a wonderful bond. It's been an experience to say the least. Um, we've had a couple of hiccups here and there, but um, the past month or so has been really steady and we're really getting into the swing of things now. Um, a couple of snow days here and there, a couple of cast changes and production staff changes, but We've really got a strong cast now. I'm really, really happy with um, all of my you know, co-actors. Dane and I have had amazing chemistry the entire time, so uh, the fact that he's been a big constant as Max Bialystok has been wonderful for me. And we're just having the time of our lives out on the stage. Uh, it's been really, really fun. The story is about an accountant named Leo Bloom, and he hates his life, he hates his job. Um, he desperately wants to be a Broadway producer, set in 1950s New York, and he, his entire life has aspired to be a Broadway producer. And um, he meets Max Bialystok, who used to be a great Broadway producer and has since had not so much luck with his productions. Um, and they team up, um, they come up with this plan to create a flop and then collect the insurance money or just collect the money because um, they, they're going to pick the worst show and it's going to fail the next day. So, um, and then everything just kind of unfolds from there. My character comes in and stirs up <laughs> more drama. So, it's a good time. This is my second Mel Brooks show. Um, my first was Young Frankenstein a couple years ago, and it's just hilarious. It's just super fun, it's just funny. Um, and I'm uh, Dan, the director I've known for a long time. Um, he's like, hey, I'm directing this show, come audition. And I was like, <laughs> sure. I think the show is hilarious. Uh, I think it's one of the funniest Broadway shows out there, um, hands down. I mean, I've always been a fan of Mel Brooks. Literally, my favorite movie is Blazing Saddles, and I could probably quote it from beginning to end if you ever wanted me to, but please don't ask me to because I'll embarrass myself. Um, but getting the chance to play Leo is extremely you know, gratifying for me. Like I've always enjoyed being in community theater, but I don't typically get the larger roles, so having the chance to, to be in a lead role like this and to, to have the opportunity to kind of let myself shine a little bit has been really, really awesome, and, and like I said, the show is just hilarious. I think, what I think about this show is that it shows how two guys who one who's in a rut in his life and another who's down on his luck in, this, in his life can get together and just kind of m make a scheme that the two of them are now laughing together and palling around together to their end game is, is to make a million dollars each and just kind of be successful in their own right. And it's this story around success that underneath all of the comedy is these two guys just trying to make it and doing everything they can, whether it, it's, it's cutting a few lines just to be successful in their mind or fulfill a dream in their mind. Uh, so that is something that's really stuck with me in the show. Uh, before coming into the show, I thought about it and I read up on it and of course I saw the movie and I saw uh, a little bit of snippets of the Broadway production. And I just thought it was silly at first and you kind of get into it as an actor and you get into the show and you realize how it starts having meaning to you in a, in a way that I come here and I smile every time I'm on stage or watching the other actors perform. This story is irreverent and ridiculous and absolutely crazy, but it's an escape. It's absolutely just completely fun for the audience and completely fun for all of us in the cast. It's not a great work of art, but it did win the Tony for Best Musical, so you know it's gotta be good. I 
I think somebody should come to the show if they're looking for an ex escape. They can come in here and they can sit down for two hours and just escape from their life and just watch and sit and laugh and spend two hours just nonstop laughing and just watching this, this masterpiece in front of them and watching these actors put on this uh, amazing comedy where you will forget all of your issues and all of the issues that you, or any problem or any stress that you have going on in your life and you can sit down for two hours and just smile and laugh and have camaraderie with everyone else who gets to enjoy that show. I think that we're in very serious times right now as a world and as a community, so any chance to get away from it for a little while and just kind of laugh at things, be it little old ladies or men dressed as little old ladies or Nazis or, you know, random producers just running around drooling over hot blondes. It's, it's just a lot of fun to be able to get away for a little while and forget about the rest of the world and just focus on the, the foibles and, and the fun that, that go on in the show. You should come to the show because it is really fun. It's just a good time. It's something fun to do on a night out. Um, it's winter time, it's cold. There's not a lot of other stuff to do. Um, and this is local, it's close, it's fun. You can laugh. Um, the show is just really silly. It just makes fun of a lot of things. There's so much going on right now. There's a lot of tension and politics and, and just all sorts of things going on in the world. And to just sit and like kind of make fun of it all and just laugh is a good time. So <laughs> why not? What people are going to resonate from the show and what they're going to leave the theater remembering is how much they laughed in the last two hours. And they will all have their own individual moments of where they laugh the hardest. Whether it's seeing a Nazi sympathizer jump and dance around to, and sing to his pet pigeons, or whether it's seeing two gentlemen bounce each other around the stage fighting over accounting books, or trying to avoid jail, or whether it's seeing the, the Swedish uh, actress audition and prance around the office while these two men faint and fall over each other. There is something for everybody to laugh at in this show. And there is just a comedic value to the show that is intangible. You can really sit there and, in, and each person who sits in this audience for two hours is going to be nonstop laughing. And so you will leave this show as if you just saw a stand-up comedy and it was a sketch that you remember the most. I remember the sketch about the Nazi guy singing on the roof to his pigeons, or the sketch about the guy dancing with all of the old women and doing a tap dance with their walkers. And there's that, those different little sketch comedies that happen in the show where each person will leave with their favorite memory that they laughed the hardest at and that they literally cried laughing at. I think the thing that is what will resonate most with the audience um, when they're leaving the theater is just a pure joy. Uh, the fact that everything in this show ends on a happy note, even characters with broken legs and little old ladies who fall over in their walkers. It's just, it's just so much fun that I think the audience is going to leave with a real lighthearted sense of joy. When you go into this show and when you first watch this show, you see the com comedic value. You see. Um, just the pure laughter that comes from something so ridiculous and them trying to put on this immense flop. Uh, but when you come out of the show, what really resonated with me is the idea of success. And especially for myself being a young professional is everyone has their own idea of success. For Max in the show, his idea of success is being a rich and famous Broadway producer. For Leo uh, in the show, his idea of success is just altogether being a Broadway producer at least once in his life. And you get to this part in your life, especially I'm going through this now, where you decide whether or not your profession or what you do in life is what truly makes you happy. And in the end goal, when you realize what makes you happy and that's what you pursue, that's when you find the ultimate success. And so that part of the show really resonates with me is that the end goal is success and happiness. And the comedy just adds and bolsters to that value as well. Maybe look up the plot synopsis a little bit before you go because there's some things in it that you might not be expecting. Um, 
sexual little old ladies and Nazis, to name a few. Um, it's a really funny show, and just take everything you see with a grain of salt, and you're going to have one of the best times of your life. I would say to someone who has never seen this story before is to keep an open mind. I would say the show itself, at face value, definitely promotes some uh, potentially offensive ideas. If you come in with an open mind and you realize this is a show and these are actors, these are acting, and it, it is for pure enjoyment of the audience and doing everything they can to get a rise out of the audience and get the laughter out of the audience, you will sit and enjoy every minute of the show. And just come in with an open mind and realize that this is a, a show, these are actors, and that everything in front of you is for your enjoyment. We are here to make you smile, make you laugh, make you connect with us in, in one way or another. And whether that's through the most extreme circumstances possible, enjoy yourself and come in with an open mind. It is truly a hilarious experience. Oh my gosh. If someone's never seen this story, they have to come. Or if you've never seen Mel Brooks, you have to come. It's hilarious. You never expect what's going to happen. And nobody spill the beans. Don't ask anybody about it before you come. Just come. <laughs> Although I'm kind of spilling the beans right now, aren't I? <gasps> kind of. So this is my second show with Milburn Stone. And I think that this theater provides so much value to the surrounding community. Uh, this is a community where a lot of the time, a lot of people would say that there's not that much going on. Uh, but when you come to this theater, that is the exact opposite. There is always something going on. They have shows running constantly. They have a movie th uh, series running all year round. And this theater truly provides an entertainment experience to this community and to the surrounding communities that is something that is needed. And it is much needed in, in our lives and in this world where people can come and just enjoy themselves for the night. And so if you're looking for a good time and you want to have something to do, look at Milburn Stone. There's always something going on here.